Today I'm going to share my sous vide cocoa butter silk method for tempering chocolate. I find this to be the simplest, most consistent and effective way to temper chocolate for myself. It's not as well known as other techniques and I hadn't come across it until my fantastic chocolatier friend Jess introduced me to it a couple of years ago. I was confident and experienced in tempering chocolate with other methods but once I tried this I completely switched over and it's now the only way that I temper chocolate. It never lets me down, it's really simple and predictable and it works really well for my workflow. I'll explain the method more in a moment but the basic process is really simple. I hold some cocoa butter at a precise temperature, 33.6 degrees celsius in a water bath. Then to temper my chocolate I melt it, let it cool to a set temperature and then stir in that prepared cocoa butter. And that's more or less it, I have tempered chocolate to work with. So that's the fundamental process. Now let's have a look at what's going on within chocolate tempering to understand why this works. So chocolate can set in a variety of ways and that's dictated by the types of cocoa butter crystals formed within the chocolate. There are six types of crystals that cocoa butter can form and tempered chocolate is made up of mainly type 5. Tempered chocolate has a desirable texture, melting point and look. It has a clean snap, a visible shine and it melts in the mouth. Chocolate that's out of temper is less appealing and harder to work with. So we want chocolate that contains mainly type 5 crystals and we need a method to create these types of crystals but not others. You don't have to worry about this too much if you just want to follow my instructions you'll be able to get beautifully tempered chocolate every time but if you want to understand what's going on and why that's working I'll go into that a bit now. Each type of cocoa butter crystal melts at a different temperature, one at the lowest and six at the highest. As we warm chocolate we melt away each type of cocoa butter crystal one at a time as the temperature increases until we reach 45 degrees where all the cocoa butter crystals are melted and we have a sort of blank slate. Then next we want to develop our preferred type 5 crystals within the chocolate but not the other types. And that brings us on to seeding where we add some of the particular type of cocoa butter crystal that we want and that acts as a sort of scaffolding from which our desired type of cocoa butter crystal can rapidly multiply. A common way to do this is to add some already tempered chocolate into our melted chocolate and this is a good technique but I think that the way I'm going to show you is even more direct and consistent. And that brings us on to cocoa butter silk. So cocoa butter silk is almost entirely type 5 cocoa butter crystals, exactly the type we want. For the method that I'm going to show you we make our cocoa butter silk in the water bath and then add that directly into our melted chocolate, seeding it with the type 5 cocoa butter crystals and giving us a fantastic tempered chocolate. To make our cocoa butter silk we hold cocoa butter at 33.6 degrees celsius for 24 hours. That's above the temperature that most of the other cocoa butter crystals melt at so they melt away whilst our type 5 cocoa butter crystals rapidly develop. Over 24 hours we get almost entirely type 5 crystals in our cocoa butter. We don't worry too much about type 6 cocoa butter crystals here because they form so much slower than type 5 that they're not really a concern. Sous vide gives you the temperature control to make cocoa butter silk precisely and consistently. So let me show you this process by tempering some chocolate. I'm going to use Manjari from Valrona. It's a beautiful chocolate and it tempers well. When choosing a chocolate to temper, curvature works best. It's chocolate with a higher cocoa butter percentage which makes it easier to temper and to work with. So let's make our cocoa butter silk. I vacuum pack my cocoa butter but you can put it in a jar. Then place it in a water bath at 33.6 degrees celsius and hold it at that temperature for 24 hours. The cocoa butter will be slightly opaque when it's ready and then I like to use it in this form but you can cool it and then later grate it to add to your chocolate. So to temper our chocolate let's melt it to 45 degrees and then we'll gradually cool it down until it comes in at under 33.6 degrees. Then we add in 1% by weight of our cocoa butter silk. Then you can stir this well and we'll leave it at least a minute before you work with it. Then you can work with the tempered chocolate between 30 and 32 degrees celsius. Don't reheat it back above 32 degrees or you risk losing the temper. You can keep your chocolate at its working temperature with short 10 second blasts in the microwave. I find that this method of tempering is actually a little bit more forgiving than most methods. We can then go on to use our tempered chocolate or cast it into moulds and as it cools you don't have to worry about the development of type 1 to 4 crystals because the multiplication of type 5 will be so much more rapid than the emergence of type 1 to 4. Let the chocolate cool and try not to move it whilst it cools. And that's our tempered chocolate, it should have a nice clean snap, a shine and melt in the mouth. 
I really like this technique because it works well for how I work in the kitchen, plan my time and my workflow. You do have to think ahead in order to prepare the cocoa butter silk, but I'm having to do this with various recipes, so for me, that works out fine. I actually find it gives me quite a lot of flexibility because once the cocoa butter silk is prepared and it's there ready in the water bath, I can temper my chocolate whenever I'm ready. You can also improve ganache by adding 1% cocoa butter silk, and that's something I use it for as well. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you have, please give me a like and hit subscribe, and I'll see you soon.